Hi, this is the second video of the e TC Economics Exam Preparation Guide and I'll be looking at Section B. In the first instance you have to remember that it assesses Criterion 2 which is applying economic models, calculating ratios, interpreting economic data. You get 45 minutes, um, you have nine questions uh, available but you have to ex um, actually answer six. Um, as per Section A, um, they are grouped into the syllabus units from Unit 1, Introduction to Economics, Unit 2, Economic Management, and Unit 3, The Global Economy. So you get three questions, you have to answer two from each part. What I'm going to do here is to go through some past exam questions from 2017 and 16. Um, go through um, and, and, and give you some guides for the answer itself but also some strategies associated with it. So here's our first question um, looking at the market for fi fidget spinners. So in the first instance you had to um, say what happens to um, this particular situation. It increases demand to D2 as shown um, <clears throat> and what you also have to do is to talk about the price and the quantity and importantly you have to put these items up on the graph. So here you can see that the price has increased to P2 and we've got an increased quantity to, to Q2. Um, Q2. Q1 was there and P1 was there so we have had an increase. So that's what you need to say there. It's importantly uh, it, with all questions uh, especially in, in this particular section that you use uh, graphs, tables and diagrams as much as possible. You also should say to complete your question there's been expansion of supply along here right? um, which has led to the increase in quantity demanded. Next question, question 11 for 2017. So we're talking about um, elasticity. Um, so the sausage rolls have increased in, in price. So importantly what you have to do um, you have to work out what the um, total revenue is or total outlay for each one of these sections. Um, they've asked you specifically okay, from $2 to $3 so you calculate that one, calculate that one and then um, you'd also have to calculate these ones up there in order to answer this last question here. So what do we do? Um, we calculate, I mean I've, co I've got all the figures there, that's quite quickly to do and then you have to work out um, what happens at uh, 350. So we've gone from $3 uh, to 350. Um, so you have to apply your rules. So if price increases and the total outlay decreases, it's elastic. So it's been responsive to the hike in price. Had it been uh, higher than 6,000, um, it would have been inelastic because that means it's unresponsive to the movement in price. Had it been the same, it would have been unit elastic. Here's the next question. We're looking at a production possibility frontier. Um, and you had to use the concept of opportunity cost to, to in the first instance, show the movement from X to Y. And then we had to work out what happens at the point W. So let's do the opportunity cost first. So um, we've got lost essential two goods and uh, what you must do, you must use a graph. So I've put two lines in here. Um, so at X, at point X we were producing three essential goods um, and when we move to Y now we're only producing uh, one essential good. Um, so that means we've had a loss of two units, three minus one which equals two. Um, and it, you can also say that we had an increase of uh, luxury units from two to four so that means we had an increase of two. Right? But importantly the, the answer to the question here is that we've got an opportunity cost of two. In relation to point W that's inside the curve uh, that means that the resource not been utilised at, at, at their maximum and that implies that we've got a waste of resources and underutilisation of resources. And you can give examples in terms of um, labour not being applied all the, t uh, for at, at, uh, all the time or they're not working hard enough 
um, alternatively in relation to capital resources they're not being used 100% of the time so maybe um, there's lack of demand and, and uh, utilisation rates are down. Here's question 10 from 2016 where again we've got a supply and demand diagram in this, in this instance we've got a tax on sugary drinks and then once, once that's been completed uh, you then have to uh, relate that answer to the elasticity. Let's have a go at this. So a tax is a, um, a supply determinant and if a tax is imposed um, it will decrease supply as shown and importantly uh, what we have to then uh, state on the graph is that we've had um, an increase in price but a decrease in quantity as you can see here. Um, it's important to label these parts in the diagram um, <coughs> and to describe it as well. That's really important. You can't, you can't put it on the diagram and not describe it or vice versa. It's really important that you do both. In relation to the elasticity question, um, if the price movement is inelastic and the government knows the consumers would be not that responsive to price changes, perhaps due to the addictive nature. So uh, that would mean that uh, they would, uh, the government would know that it's going to have uh, a bigger impact upon their level of income. So people who are, are buying sugar drinks are not necessarily going to uh, change their habits straight away f due to its addictive nature. Right? So I've identified one uh, demand elasticity determinant, so that's important in your answer, um, and also explain why the government um, <coughs> will know the impact that it have, because um, people will still buy it at a higher price, therefore it'll impact upon their um, household budgets. Here we've got, uh, yeah, do a, draw, draw up a circular flow diagram and the five models and you had to um, distinguish between injection and leakages um, and I've got this example here which I've copied directly from um, Google but nevertheless it's, it's very useful so we've got uh, the five sectors the businesses, the households, banks, governments and the international sector so in the first instance we've got these leakages, net savings, the taxes and import expenditure um, and then from these various sectors we get injections, um, investment, uh, government expenditure and export expenditure. All right. So um, if you had to explain that in a bit more detail, uh, the households put their money in the bank to be saved, um, that is in use as an injection for uh, businesses to take out as loans to use for capital investment and so on. Question 12, uh, we're looking for another another question relating to a produ production possibility frontier. Um, but this is uh, asked a bit, bit different. Again, you had to calculate the opportunity costs. Um, very similar to the earlier question I talked to you about. So the loss here is two capital goods. So it's four minus two equaling two units of capital goods that we have lost, but we have gained three consumption goods. So the long-term implication is that if we have more consumption goods and less capital goods it means our productive capacity of our economy is going to be decreased in the longer term. Um, so potentially the uh, output will be lower in the future because we haven't uh, increased our productive capacity in our economy. In relation to point Y there's a range of things that you could say here um, the most common ones is using technology to increase output. So it means that by using technology we decrease units of production so we can make our um, output go further or increase. Uh, we can train labour uh, to make them uh, more qualified to produce um, higher level, um, you know, to perform in higher level jobs. And we also might discover new minerals, for example, there might be an oil strike or some such thing to increase the amount of resources available to us. Other questions that you could get um, are here, you can pause um, and, and see that. 
um, and perhaps use these um, as practice. They're from previous exams going back to about 2012. So if you have a look at past exams, you'll find those there. But they're um, good examples for this introduction to economic uh, part one question. Now let's go to economic management, which is the next part where you have to again choose two out of these three questions. And I've got a number of questions here um, to um, to illustrate what's going on. So in this instance, you were given some some data, which is comes which came straight from the ABS site. Um, so you had to calculate that labour force participation. You need to know that it's uh, <coughs> The uh, labour force participation is your total labour force, which makes, which is made up of people who are employed and people who want to be employed. So you can see that plus that equals that. Whoops, I've clicked something. Beg your pardon. So that uh, that 12,234 plus the 712 is equal to that. That's your total labour force. Um, so they're the ones that are wanting to work and are are working. But these are the t t total people who um, uh, uh, could work, okay? But are choosing for various reasons not to. So you had to divide 12,946 into 2040, and you get 64.6%. The unemployment rate um, is the uh, unemployment of people unemployed, 712 out of the 12,946. Um, and I've given the, um, uh, the the raw figures there, but you could have gone straight to that had you realised that that plus that equals that. But be careful, sometimes you don't get the total uh, labour force, so uh, you have to you, you have to include the people that are employed and unemployed in the uh, denominator here. So that equals to 5.5%. Um, what conclusion can be drawn? Um, is that the unemployment rate dropped uh, from 5.82% and I had to calculate that um, to 5.5%. So I had to do a quick calculation um, based on these figures here to, to get that answer. This is the next question. So this has come from a budget document, uh, the federal budget document, and they've got some growth uh, inflation forecast. So from that, you had to make some um, interpretations. You had to come up with an aggregate supply diagram um, and say something about the growth rate and the consumer price index. So, um, in the first instance, the um, to answer the first part, the aggregate demand and supply diagram, you had to say what happens there in relation to uh, based on the data. Um, the data tells you that we've got increased growth in the in the economy, but also at an increased price, which is the level of inflation. So, so G, GPI, the consumer price, CPI, the consumer price index, and GDP have increased, um, which has led to a um, increase in the consumer price index in terms of the level of prices. So it's gone up from there to there and we've had an increase in output from there to there. So it's important that uh, you highlight all these changes on the graph as well as explaining those. The next one, asking about the response by the Reserve Bank well, if GDP goes up and inflation goes up and it goes towards the uh, upper levels of the two percent towards the the three percent, um, the the Reserve Bank will um, in in time will increase interest rates. So you had to make that link there. Question thirteen of two thousand and sixteen. Um, you're given some figures here, and you had to calculate the rate of inflation, the annual growth rate. So it's a bit similar to before but you had to do some calculations here based on the figures that you had. So the inflation rate in the first instance um, for 2014, you had to take the, 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 the current CPI and take away the previous CPI and divide it by the previous CPI. So um, 
the rate of inflation here is you can see by these figures is 3.9 percent which is obviously fairly high um, in relation to the annual growth rate you had to um, in 2015 do a similar calculation so that's 1200 minus 1100 divided by 1100 so you get 9.1 percent uh, the real uh, GDP for 2015 which is actually outside the syllabus ne but nevertheless it's, um, it's, it's good to, to look at this is the difference between these two figures so the inflation rate um, the root is oh, I beg your pardon what, what you had to do here first um, to calculate the real GDP um, you had to calculate the inflation rate for that year because this one here was to 2014 but you needed the inflation rate for 2015 so there's a bit of a trap here I suppose um, so you take that figure away from that um, and you get 4.4 percent so the real growth rate was 4.4 percent and the nominal growth rate was 9.1 percent and the difference between the two is you take an account of inflation so that's quite a tricky question but it's a good one for pre preparing yourself um, for potential um, questions um, for the end of year exam this is question 14 so this is again is talking about aggregate dem demand and supply uh, curves so <clears throat> in this instance um, the impact of this policy in relation to, uh, to increase efficiency would be that the uh, aggregate demand would um, increase so that means that we've got lower costs of production in a lot of industries and so on and so forth uh, may have uh, been caused by microeconomic reform it can be a whole lot of reasons but importantly the answer here is that aggregate supply has increased to AS2 which has meant that we've got lower prices so it's come from there to there and we've increased output so that's important to, to note that um, again it's important to note these things on the graph as well as describing them in the details I've shown and as you would have found out by now I'm using uh, symbols and numbers to indicate changes and to, to pinpoint um, where they go so question 15 we're looking at a business cycle um, fairly stock standard and easy question um, explain the impacts uh, of the economy when it's a point C but in the first instance we had to say uh, what, what are the four phases of the uh, business cycle so here we are at the peak um, and upswing here is a D, D and, and an A they usually involve with um, when the economic activity is increasing and conversely at B and C um, we've got when the economy is, is going down um, so you should also in your answers quickly state that at point A we've got increased inflation at point C we've got um, increased unemployment in terms of what happens at, uh, at C if it's answered that so we've got high unemployment, low economic growth but you could also say that um, the other issue there is low inflation and in the current context in the Australian economy is that our inflation rate has been below 2% for quite a while and a low inflation rate below that can be a problem in longer term so um, it's worthwhile noting that as well other questions you can get are here um, have, a, have a look at that um, pause I'm just going to keep going okay now we're talking about uh, the global ec economy questions in part 3 or unit 3 of the syllabus um, we're talking about here a, a quota um, that was the uh, first time a quota has been asked in a long time um, but uh, nevertheless it's something that um, you should know about um, you had to draw on the diagram and then explain uh, the effect on Australian beef producers and Australian consumers so I've uh, got a, a, a completed um, curve here and I'm going to talk you through uh, as I go along so in the first instance uh, we were at P2 we are a, a price taker because the world price then dominates our market 
if, the, if, we, if we didn't allow the world price to dominate we would be using at P star and Q star but that doesn't occur so at P this is currently the level here uh, with the imposition of a quota it means that um, foreign goods are reduced in, in, in some way which drives up the world price to P2 so let's look at some of the impacts here the quota as I've said is at P1 and domestic production has increased from Q2, Q1 to P, Q2 let's look at this so this is the local or the um, domestic the Australian supply curve the quota has been imposed the prices of the, that particular product whether it be cars or whatever has increased to P1 so it, it means that um, the local production can increase along this line up to Q2 so the production's increased from Q1 to Q2 and that's that'll be partly the motivation of having a quota to to help local production and therefore increase jobs the other thing to to note though is that um, at this lower price before the quota was put in Q2 uh, Q4 was uh, demanded but um, of course at the higher price um, now only Q3 are demanded so the answer here is that domestic demand has gone down so consumers are saying look it's too expensive um, I'm going to uh, not buy as many or not buy any at all therefore decreasing demand to Q3 from Q4 question 17 you're given a whole lot of data um, from again the ABS and all you had to do um, is, is to try and come up with reasons why potentially um, some of these figures moved so let's have a look at that so in the first instance the 21.1% decrease in iron ore concentrates um, obviously impact upon our export performance um, I'm hoping that you would realize that the biggest component of our export performance relates to the prices of commodities things like coal iron ore and gold and so forth so um, if the prices for those decrease it's going to have an impact upon our uh, performance but also um, if uh, foreign countries particularly China and South Korea decrease demand then uh, they're going to want less of our iron ore and coal and so forth which also have has a, a big impact upon our export performance and given what uh, Trump has uh, imposed in relation to tariffs if it uh, starts to bite in China then it's obviously going to impact upon Australia in terms of our exports to China and South Korea and so forth so that's the first one we had to talk about the, the passenger cars um, and that can be through a number of reasons I've, I've said here increased income of consumers that's one such reason or decrease in the prices of foreign cars um, can be another reason and they're the obvious ones that you can state there question 18 uh, we had to look at these figures uh, for the um, British pound and the US dollar so what happens what happened with these in relation to the last four years well um, if you have a look at the British pound it went from 54 pence to 61 so that means that's an appreciation so it's gone up um, and for the US dollar it's gone from 89 cents to 82 cents so there, therefore it's a depreciation what are the implications for the foreign debt um, so that's quite a tricky question um, but you've got to realize that um, if our foreign debt is in foreign currencies for example uh, in British pounds uh, if our if our um, exchange rate goes up right, it means that the, the, the value of our um, relation to in, in, the debt in British pounds actually goes down and, and, and also the interest payments that we have to pay on a regular basis also goes down so it's advantageous um, for when the currency appreciates and you can see here for the US dollars depreciated therefore our debt level in in, uh, in in Australian dollar term goes up and our interest payments also will go up
This is another good question. We're talking about the uh, relative interest rates between Australia and the US and if they've increased so that means that the difference in interest rates between Australia and the US has gone higher. So for example um, uh, if, a, if in America it's 2% and Australia it's 3% and we've put up ours to 3.5% that means the relative interest rates between the two countries has increased. So what will that be impact be on um, this graph um, based on the change of monetary policy, so the monetary policy increase in interest rates. So the demand for Australian dollars would increase to D2 um, and appreciate the dollar. Now why would that be? Um, essentially if more uh, foreigners want to take advantage of the higher rates of interest they're going to demand Australian dollars and want to invest their money in Australia and therefore that's why uh, the dollar would go up. In terms of exports to the US um, you have to realize that as the dollar goes up it means that exports become more expensive to buy by foreigners um, and therefore they have to pay uh, they have to pay more for th the goods and services they buy from Australia okay so it's disadvantaged for exporters question 18 we're looking here at the um, rate of the Australian dollar relating to the US dollar so you've got to describe the trend so um, since January it's gone down but if you even if you go since September last year we've had a bit of a, a spike here but the trend is still down so therefore obviously from 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 about here for 80 cents it's gone to about 70 uh, three cents it's a depreciation right the implications for uh, two components of aggregate demand and <coughs> the the relevant ones here and uh, that you should talk about is exports and imports so you should know that exporters uh, like a depreciation in the dollar and therefore therefore exports will increase um, and importers don't like it because they have to pay more in foreign currencies Okay. Question 18. Indicate on the in the graph um, the quantity of the banana, bananas produced in Australia and the quantity that is imported or exported. Um, so again, that's a fairly difficult um, question. Um, let's let's have a have a, have a look at this. So this is uh, again we're talking about a. Um, the domestic economy where we are the price taker which means that the world price influences our um, market we don't achieve the normal equilibrium that we would have in our, if we weren't trading internationally so therefore we've got the foreign price interfering if you like with our price so in the first instance our local producers are willing to produce Q1 the domestic demand is going to be Q2 so you need to realize that there's a shortage of bananas in this instance so this shortage um, will be imported so local producers can only pr uh, provide that they're efficient enough at this at this uh, lower price so there's some some more efficient producers in the market still um, but at that price our consumers are saying we want lots of bananas so the, the shortage is then imported. Now if we talk about this research that provide lots of health benefits it means that um, the demand in our local um, economy is going to increase to D2 as is shown here um, which means that now uh, even more bananas are being demanded at Q3. So um, because the price hasn't changed the local producers are still only producing Q1 that means we've got a bigger level of imports now required to fulfill the demand so the, the, the uh, imports has now gone up um, from from Q3 to Q, less Q1 so it's this, this distance over here okay that's it um, hopefully that's been useful to you and the next um, video obviously we're doing with section C.
good luck.